Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about a very quick topic about how to enable or show raw values from the Sitecore fields. Uh, this is very useful if you want to, uh, for example, make changes to the uh, general link field. Um, there's some features that uh, the speak dialog doesn't really expose um, through the dialog itself. So there's a way that you can go in, show the raw values and make changes to uh, some of these fields and some of these features that are not exposed through the dialog. So um, that's just one example, but there's also other examples. If you, a lot of the fields behind the scenes that you see within the uh, Sitecore interface they are actually either XML, they might be a multi-list or a collection of some sort of CSV value of uh, GUIDs. Um, and there's other um, types of fields that it might be useful to just see what's actually, what the data actually looks like, uh, which is useful to then work with that data, uh, you, having a better understanding of how that data is coming to uh, your code can allow you to build uh, your implementations differently or better um, knowing that data. So uh, so let's go to the content editor real quick from the launch pad. And then once you're in the content editor, um, to, to enable that option, you're gonna go up into the view tab. And then you'll notice that there's these six check box boxes, uh, content tree, entire tree, standard fields, hidden items, buckets and raw values. You'll notice that raw values actually is not selected. So let's go into some sort of item. Um, let's go into a contributor. So a contributor is made up of just of title. So this is not the greatest example, but we'll, we'll just click on raw values and you'll see that nothing really has changed. The data behind this field, the title field, is just a, a string. Um, so the single line text or multi-line, even the raw, the, uh, the rich text editor, a lot of those fields are going to be just as, as you see them. Um, however, there are other fields that are not quite like how you see them. Uh, let's go down to the article itself. So if we look at this item in raw value form, we'll notice that, like I said, all these uh, string or single line or, or multi-line or even uh, this one I believe is a rich text box, you'll see that they're just displaying the HTML, they're just text in both scenarios. But now we'll come down to the contributors. Contributors was a multi-line field. So how it's, what it's doing behind the scenes and what it's storing behind the scenes of that, that kind of fancier interface, if we go back out, this interface is that you're just, it's just storing data as a, kind of a CSV or piped delimited list of, of GUIDs. Um, so that's all it's really storing. And then it's, it's Sitecore that's taking this data and turning it into enumerables or, or whatever uh, collection type that you want. Um, so it's, it's kind of important to note that. Uh, it, eventually, I'm going to show a series on um, how to create custom fields, and we're going to start exploring how uh, we might have, uh, you know, fields like the general link field. Let's go ahead and just show a general link field. So let's turn off raw values, and I'm just going to make a change to this article template. And I'm just going to add a field called example, and I'm just going to create a general link field. So general link, save. And then I'm going to go up here, and I'm just going to uh, modify this field. So those that have not seen the general link field, it's basically an option to insert links and insert link to the current site, which is if I select that option, it will allow me to select something from the current tree. So I'll say the home page. And I can add a description. And just like that. So now it's behind the scenes, it's actually storing the ID of the item I selected. So even if this home page uh, path were to change, if it became home dash new, it would still, as long as that ID is still the same, it would just store that. Um, 
So one of the things that uh, this field has had struggles with, or I've had struggles with it, um, in the new speak uh, interfaces that it gives, because these, when you click these links, this is a speak dialog. Um, you'll notice that it doesn't give you an option to add an anchor. So let's say you wanted to link to the home page, but then also provide an anchor. Um, if, if you select an anchor here, it won't work, work right. Unless they fix that, I think they have a. So I'll go back here, and I've added the anchor, but I don't think it's it's storing it. So notice it's removed that value. So it doesn't know how to take the anchor that you want. So I want to go to the home page, and I want to anchor to um, the home page H1 called uh, here. So I want to call it here, and it won't let me add it. So it's not really um, doing anything with that data. So once I save, what you'll notice if I go back to the view tab and click on raw values, is that now it's storing everything as basically an XML node or element. Um, so it's got attributes for text, that, that description I added, I said description here, it's storing as a text attribute, uh, link type internal, basically meaning that it's linking to the internal website as an ID. So that's that ID, that, that item I selected, which was a home item, it's storing it as an ID here. Um, it can store class names or titles. You can also give it a target of, you know, underscore blank, for example, to open up a new window. You can also provide a query string value. And it's also possible to store an anchor. So like I was mentioning, if you wanted to add an anchor, but you don't want, but you, you're unable to do it for the speak Im implementation or the dialogue that it shows, you can actually just go ahead, show raw values, and then you can actually add it in here. Now it will never show up in the interface, the speak dialog, but um, it's it's actually going to process this on the, the front end. So on the front end, it's going to um, interpret this string. It's not it's not interpreting the 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 friendly. Uh, it's not interpreting this. It's actually taking that XML string, uh, parsing it into some sort of model, and then that model determines uh, how to build the URL. Uh, so it'll determine if it's an internal link or an external link. If it's an external link, then it will just take that URL that you've provided. If it's an internal link with a ID, then it will determine that it needs to get that ID item and then uh, pull that through the link manager and then pull out a URL for that item ID. Um, and, and it will append anything that you've added to it. So if you've added an anchor, it will append that to the, the uh, URL that it generates, and then it will go to, let's say, the home page and anchor to a specific ID on the page. Um, same with the other options it has, like it has um, the query string, the title, things like that. So that's pretty much it for the uh, raw values demonstration. Um, you can do more with this, like I said, uh, if we start creating custom fields, uh, you'll see that if you want to store more complex types, uh, you can store this. Um, I'm going to demonstrate how you can then take this data uh, using Glass or even just the Sitecore Item API and can kind of consume this more complex data type, um, such as XML, and turning that into some sort of custom model that then you can, um, you know, have strongly typed properties that you can call from um, and uh, you know, kind of really see where this, you know, being able to store more complex types of data in these fields as just strings um, kind of allow you to do kind of cool things um, within your website from these custom fields or currently existing fields. So if you have any questions about this, please let me know. This is really just a quick session on you know exposing the raw values and really seeing the values behind these fields. So if you have questions, just reach out to me.